God, you created the heavens and the earth and all people. We light this candle in your name, Creator God, the source of love. In Jesus, your Son, you live among us. Through him we know how much you love us. We light this candle in the name of Jesus, who is love incarnate. The Holy Spirit flows through us and fills us with energy and life. We light this candle in the name of the Holy Spirit, bearer of love in the world. And now all who are able are invited to stand and sing our opening hymn for the beauty of the earth. Join me in the gathering prayer. God of love, who cares for all as though all were but one, show us your love. Teach us your love. During the transitions of life, fill us with your love and guide us with your love and hold us in your everlasting, ever loving arms. Amen. Welcome. You may be seated. I want to welcome you to this service where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome to worship. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please greet each other with a wave. One of these days, guys, we'll get a hug. Anyway. Do I not have the right ones? I got a lot of them. All right. So, lots of announcements. But first of all, good morning. Good morning. Happy Memorial Day. And I would like to take this opportunity, coming from uh, a generation of having people in World War, Spanish American War, World War I, and World War II, I would like to recognize any veterans that are with us today, women or men. Well, Happy Veterans Day to those. Dick Ford, I know you were in the service, and Wayne, don't be shy. We're proud of you, and thank you for your service. Uh, and I really should say my brother-in-law was in Vietnam, so you know the family goes back a ways. And at this time, we have many announcements. So first of all, I'm going to do with a happy announcement that John Murray got his 300th dual win as the wrestling coach for Genesee High School. John's not here, but let's clap for him anyway. <laughs> the Genesee girls soccer team clinched the conference championship with Cadence as the goalkeeper and had her picture in the paper. 
and did not allow a goal to be scored. That's our cadence. She does have a full scholarship, too, to go to the school in Florida that she's going to to play soccer. So, And if you want to see Cadence over the summer, she's working at Sugar Maple. So you'll see her out there. Other announcements. Um, men and women's breakfast at 7 o'clock at State Street Cafe every Wednesday morning at 8.30 a.m. We're in, you're invited to a time of fellowship and study and they are exploring the topics uh, usually included in a confirmation class, but in more depth. So join them on Zoom at 9.30 for a relaxed and inspirational discussion. I already said about the breakfast. Uh, the flower chart is in the narthex. If you wish to sign up for flowers, if there's a pencil there, all you have to do is sign your John Henry. Uh, I see Ed is here, so if anybody wants training in the vertical lift, he could help you with that. And then uh, lastly, the, well, no, there's more. Uh, the Board of Deacons has ease restrictions for in-person worship and is working towards opening the church fully as soon as possible while maintaining the health and safety of our church family. The pro protocols are reviewed monthly. And so that then going on. Oh, good morning, Amelia. Uh, you are invited to a special morning worship service on June 27th at 9 a.m. where we will honor the 50 and 75 year members of this church. Angie Snook will present a parallel comparing the 1918 flu pandemic and the current cor cor coronavirus pandemic. And she will also discuss how the ladies of this church helped out during the 1918 flu pan pandemic and how they dealt with the crisis. <sighs> now, does anyone else have an announcement? Yeah, we, we were going to do this back in October or November with the, uh, when we did the, the uh, about the historical and uh, 50 and 75 year members. So with COVID and everything, Yeah, I already saw that. That's cool. Really good thinking on your part. <laughs> Have enough. I said the flower chart. Yes, I did. Oh, you know, there, there are papers on the tables in the narthex for the uh, to sign up if you wish to be an usher the flower chart which i mentioned and i don't know what the other one would be for coffee. oh the coffee okay all right all right help out the deacons so any other announcements okay oak genocide sports are still going on folks so there's other things happening Tomorrow is conference tournament for the tennis team. So it's unusual on Memorial Day, but they have to play because they have to get it in for all the other times coming up. So we will hear our scripture readings now. And the first of these comes from the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on his throne, high and exalted and his robe filled the whole temple. Around him, flaming creatures were standing, each of which had six wings. Each creature covered its face with two wings and its body with two, and used the other two for flying. And they were calling out to each other, Holy, 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 the Lord Almighty is holy. His glory fills the world. The sound of their voices made the foundation of the temple shake, and the temple itself became filled with smoke. I said, there is no hope for me. I am doomed because every word that passes my lips is sinful. And I live among a people whose every word is sinful. And yet with my own eyes, I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the creatures flew down to me, 
carrying a burning coal that he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with the burning coal and said, this has touched your lips. Now your guilt is gone and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord say, whom shall I send? Whom will be our messenger? I answered, I will go, send me. The second reading comes from the book of Romans in the New Testament, chapter eight, verses 12 through 17. These words are pretty meaningful for today, I think. So then, my friends, we have an obligation, but it is not to live as our human nature wants us to. But if you live according to your human nature, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. Those who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. For the Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children by the Spirit's power and cry out to God, Father, my Father. God's Spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. Since we are his children, we will possess the blessing he keeps for his people. And we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. There ends the reading of his scriptures today. May we keep these words and help us to understand their meaning. All right, any uh, young people to come forward?
morning. Yesterday, I saw three paratroopers. They were floating or gliding across the sky and, land, and they landed just east of town. And it reminded me of the story of the uh, young paratrooper. Now, it takes some trust and faith uh, to parachute out of a plane. But this paratrooper was just learning to jump and he was given the following instructions. First, jump when you're told. Second, count to 10 and pull the rip cord. Third, in the unlikely event that it doesn't open, pull the second chute open. And fourth, when you go down, a truck will take you back to base. So the plane ascended to the proper height. The people started peeling out and the young paratrooper jumped when told. He counted to 10, he pulled the cord, but the chute failed to open. So he proceeded to the backup plan. The second chute also failed to open. Oh boy, he said, when I get down, I suppose the truck won't be there either. <laughs> now, I do believe there was a vehicle to pick up the three paratroopers I saw yesterday. Certainly, there are times in our lives when we are given opportunities to practice trust and faithfulness, times when we are called to follow God into an unknown future. There was such a time for the prophet Isaiah. So in our passage for today that Carol just read, it was a time of worship as usual for Isaiah as he entered the temple. Now, it could be that he did not even want to go to get up that morning to go to worship. Perhaps we've had that feeling uh, before going to worship, maybe even today. Well, Isaiah was on duty that week, and he was required to be in the temple. How many other times had he come to the temple? He was probably so accustomed to it that he was like some of us. We attend worship, but we don't necessarily expect anything real exciting to happen, at least nothing to drastically change our lives. But it did happen, and it does happen. And maybe it happens at the very moment that we are most resistant to it. Our defenses are up, and we just dare God to break through them. Oh, how we sometimes fight God's breaking through to us. Well, thank goodness, people do respond to God's call and end up making a positive, wonderful difference in the world. The, uh, the wonderful Florence Nightingale, the mother of modern nursing, was one such person who answered God's call and, of course, made a huge difference. She saved numerous lives, enabled other women to pursue careers in the medical field. She came from a wealthy English family. She read a lot. She had a knack for languages. She was good in math, good with numbers. And just as important, Florence had empathy for others and as well as a sense of responsibility to help them. Now, as a young child, she showed glimpses of being a caretaker, beginning with animals. The story goes that she rescued and cared for dogs and other creatures. In one instance, she bandaged the leg of a sheepdog and nursed it back to health. Plus, she was prescient enough to get rid of germs by boiling water when tending to an animal's or a human's wound. Well, it would not be easy for a woman in her day and with her status or stature in life to pursue a career. On February 7th, 1837, before she was to be presented to society as a debutante, Florence heard God speak to her and it would change the direction of her life. She said God, God called her to be of service to help the sick and the poor, and she felt a strong desire to become a nurse. But according to an article in Time, Florence was conflicted. The nursing profession was held in low regard. In addition, women in the Victorian age were expected to be homemakers, stay at home. But Florence heeded God's call, went against her parents' wishes, educated herself in arts and science, and received some nursing training experience at an institution for the poor in Germany. 
During the Crimean War in March of 1854, Sidney Herbert appointed Nightingale to lead 38 volunteer nurses to a, a military hospital in Skatari in modern-day Turkey to help wounded soldiers returning from the front lines. She and, her she and her team faced squalid, horrific conditions, but remained faithful to God's call. She showed tremendous compassion to the wounded and to families of the injured. She would go on to make nursing a highly respected profession, and she insisted on and, and she insisted on and set new sanitary standards in medical care. Standards that seem obvious to us, but clean beds, clean sheets, clean rooms, and caring, loving, compassionate nurses. Florence died at the age of 90 after saving countless lives and changing the world for the better. Just as Isaiah did, Florence answered God's call by saying, send me. God's call or revelation came when least expected for Florence Nightingale and for many people. A Moses is walking along and suddenly a bush is on fire except that it doesn't burn up and from the burning bush God's voice is heard. A stranger comes walking by while some men are out fishing and this stranger calls to them and they come and follow him. Revelation of God, unexpected by us, uncontrolled by us, given by the grace of God. And such a calling or revelation from God is a gift. And the choice we have is to accept the gift or not. Well, as we continue in that passage from Isaiah, the cherubim, or one of the seraphim, took some tongs, went to the fire, picked out a hot coal, and touched it to Isaiah's lips. Well, to me, I've seen people break out when they feel God's call, uh, God's being with them. I've seen people break out in tears of overwhelming relief and joy. To me, it's, to me, it's like a deep knowing that all is okay, that all is right, and that no matter what happens, God will always be with me. It's accepting the fact that we've been accepted as God's child. It's about accepting God's forgiveness. It's accepting God's mercy. And once we have heard and accepted God's call, God's revelation, we begin the doing of God's will. So in his autobiography, the Reverend Dr. William Sloan Coffin Jr. tells about the time he attended a memorial service for a friend who had been killed in an automobile accident. And he was upset with God for the injustice of life, argued with God, and then the organist played one of the great Bach uh, choral preludes, Christus Log in Todesbanden. Christ stands in the bonds of death. He remembers it was genuinely comforting. And it made me think that religious truths like those of music were probably apprehended on a deeper level than they were ever comprehended. The leap of faith was not a leap of uh, thought. After all, the leap of faith was really a leap of action. The leap of faith was a leap of action. Isaiah is cleansed. The hot coal has touched his lips. If we think that God's grace is cheap and inexpensive, just ask Isaiah. It's a burning within. Grace is expensive and leads to action. And it's not always easy. For instance, it can be hard to ask someone's forgiveness. It's hard to make something right that we fouled up. It's difficult to restore a relationship by admitting that we have been wrong. And if we can get by that, just think how hard it is to be up and doing God's will. The response of the one forgiven is service. The leap of faith is a leap of action. And this can be the hardest part of all. 
And if we are unsure about what we need to be doing, why don't we begin with Jesus' teaching in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Do for others what you want them to do for you. This is the meaning of the law of Moses and of the teaching of the prophets. Don't we want people to forgive us if we have wronged them? Then we forgive them if they wrong us. Don't we want people to treat us with some sense of respect and dignity? Then we treat them that way. Don't we want people around us to be kind to us? Then we treat them that way. I made a call. I made a call to a company the other day, and I didn't know which number to push when the menu items were read to me by a computer voice. So I waited. They just said, stay on for an operator or someone will answer your call. So the operator asked how she could help, and I told her, and before she connected me to the appropriate department, she said, have a nice day. It took, me, it took me so much by surprise that I just hardly got out the words, well, thank you. And then she really made me feel good when she says, well, you're welcome. And if Jesus is teaching to do for others what you want them to do for you is not enough, there are many more in the Bible. Being in awe of God leads to good theology and results in good ethics. God claims each one of us. God calls each one of us, calls us to discipleship and commitment. Each one of us has an important, vital role or part to play in God's realm or kingdom. You and I are to live, we are to live for God and God's kingdom or God's realm on earth. We are to live responsibly in the world. And to live responsibly, according to uh, Dr. Campbell, a former professor of mine, is to attend to God's agenda. An agenda of peace, of justice, of forgiveness, of compassion, and God's gracious welcome extended to all. As challenging as God's call can be, God promises to give us the gifts we need to be faithful and promises to keep us forever. Amen. Have a blessed Memorial Day, and may God bless us all.
And now you're invited to think of any needs, joys, concerns that you might have. Um, I'd like us to continue to hold uh, Phil's mother in our prayers. So prayers for Phil's mother, for Phil, Sarah, uh, Sam, and Randy. Are there any other uh, prayer requests that anyone would like to share? Yeah, Jim. Our hearts and our love go out to, to them, the whole family, and in a very awful situation. Thank you. Any other prayer requests, a need, joy, or concern? Yes, pray for their safety and for their mission and outreach down there. Thank you. If there are no other prayer requests, let us observe a moment of silent prayer. Oh, excuse me, there is one. We have a joy, Celeste. Yes, yes. Uh, Most of you know Celeste. Um, Lindsay's middle daughter graduated high school yesterday. Our, our granddaughter Celeste graduated uh, yesterday in Texas. So we're thrilled about that. If there are no other prayer requests, let's observe a moment of silent prayer and meditation.
We praise you, living God, the provider, sustainer of our lives, through whose word is created all that lives and moves and has being. We praise you for your son, for your son Jesus, friend of the friendless, liberator of those who are bound, who in life and in death identified with our humanity. So hear our praises and draw near to us as we offer our prayers of gratitude and concern for the world. We give thanks for this holiday time, for space to relax and enjoy family and friends. We pray traveling mercies for all who will be on the roads, on water, or in the air in the coming days. We remember those whose work takes them away from family and home for long periods and pray that this may be an opportunity for reconnection and renewal. And we do not forget, O oh God, the meaning of this holiday, as Jim reminded us. We hear the words of our Lord that no, no one has greater love than to lay down their life for a friend. So hear us as we commemorate and commend to you those who lived and died in the service of others during the wars that remain in human memory. We hear the familiar words, they shall not grow old as we that are left grow old and recognize that among us are those who saw service and those who still mourn the loss of family, friend, or comrade. And so now in silence, we remember and give thanks for those who died in the defense of justice, freedom, and peace. Bless this nation, Lord, and give wisdom and compassion to those set in authority over us. Bless the soldiers, sailors, Air Force personnel. Defend them in danger. Guide them to serve the cause of peace in your name. Bless our young people. May they never see the flames of war or know the depths of cruelty to which humanity can sink. And we pray for the cities and nations that still know war, division, bigotry, and hate and bring near the day when all people will live in peace and in the knowledge of your love. And bless our friends and those who were our enemies and comfort those who mourn loved ones today. And we also pray on this day for those who continue to experience um, the violence that is, just seems to ripple through our country every week with mass shootings, the latest being in Florida. Please help us, O oh God, to find other ways, better ways uh, to end violence here in, in this country. And now rejoicing in the communion of saints, we remember those whom you've gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence and give you thanks for those whom we have known, whose memory we treasure, and at the last, grant that we, being faithful till, till death, may receive with them the crown that never fades through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose own words we further pray and we say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, we're not, we don't take up a collection uh, of offering during the worship service, but we do have offering plates in the back. And you all have been so generous, so dedicated and, and giving of time, talent, and treasure. People have been mailing in, dropping off their offerings uh, throughout this pandemic. Uh, so I say thank you to all of them and uh, uh, just and to all of you. So again, thank you for your dedication and generosity. And we will now uh, sing our doxology and then share in the dedication of the offering.
Uh, together. Eternal God, creator of the world and giver of all good, we thank you for the earth, our home, and for the gift of life. We give ourselves to you and with the church through all ages. We thank you for your saving love. Amen. And now all who are able, please stand. We will sing our closing hymn, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory. Of memorial remembrance. O God of steadfast love, tomorrow is Memorial Day, a day of remembrance. We honor those whom we have known and loved in the past. We recognize the sacrifices they have made on our behalf. Our hope is that we may be worthy of their memory. We thank you for the lessons of the past. We remember all that you have done for us. Make us truly thankful. We remember times of joy and sorrow. May these experiences make us compassionate toward others. We share the memory of your people as they have journeyed through time. It is our story as well. May the richness of our past be the ground out of which love, hope, and faithfulness blossom through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may God's face shine upon us. May Christ's peace rule in us. And may the Spirit's fire burn within us as we scatter into the world and until we meet again. Amen.
Thank you, Linda.